Imagine towering saber-toothed cats, colossal seven-feet-tall wolves, and four-ton sloths roaming the earth. These extraordinary creatures, among many others, suddenly vanished at the end of the last ice age. But what caused their sudden extinction? Join me as we delve into the depths of this enigma and uncover the truth behind this extraordinary event. The Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis, controversial from the time it was presented in 2007, proposes that an asteroid or comet hit the Earth about 12,800 years ago, causing a period of extreme cooling that contributed to extinctions of more than 35 species of megafauna including giant sloths, saber-toothed cats, mastodons and mammoths. It also coincides with a serious decline in early human populations such as the Clovis culture, and is believed to have caused massive wildfires that could have blocked sunlight, causing an impact winter near the end of the Pleistocene epoch. This evidence has subsequently been extended to scores of additional Clovis age sites where a layer of magnetic particles and microspherules, rich in platinum group elements, and containing nanodiamonds and other high-temperature carbon materials is found often covered by an organic-rich back mat that forms a demarcation line above which no megafauna fossils exist. Simultaneous evidence of major biomass burning is seen in 152 lakes, sediments, marine and ice cores over a wide geographical area. These data provide direct evidence of a comet or meteorite impact event that is referred to as the Younger Dryas impact. In a study of 97 geoarchaeological sites Vance Haynes found that two-thirds have a black, organic-rich layer, called black mat, that dates to the onset of the Younger Dryas. No evidence of megafaunal remains is found within or above the black mat. Haynes concluded that, stratigraphically and chronologically the extinction appears to have been catastrophic, seemingly too sudden and extensive for either human predation or climate change to have been the primary cause. An example of the black mat at the Murray Springs Clovis site is shown here. Numerous megafaunal fossils have been found directly in contact with the black mat. At the onset of the Younger Dryas there was a massive, worldwide extinction of mammals weighing over 40 kilograms. It is estimated that 82% of these animals disappeared in North America, 74% in South America, 71% in Australasia, 59% in Europe, 52% in Asia, and 16% in Sub-Saharan Africa. Fossil evidence suggests the disappearances were very sudden. The list of the megafauna lost in North America alone is vast. It includes horses, or Equiscotti. Equiscotti had a close relationship to modern zebras. They first evolved in North America during the Eocene Epoch and adapted to the changing climate over tens of millions of years. This horse preferred grasslands, open wetlands, and open woodlands. Like most horses, Equiscotti was a grazing herbivore, feeding primarily on grasses. Camels, or camops, first appeared during the Middle Pleistocene about 4 million years ago and suddenly became extinct just 11,000 to 12,000 years ago. It had long robust legs and a long neck and probably had a single hump because it has elongated spines only on the vertebrae over its anterior back. Giant sloths, or ground sloths, were an extinct group of mammal belonging to a group containing sloths, anteaters, glyptodonts, and armadillos that underwent a highly successful evolutionary radiation in South America in the Cenozoic era beginning 65.5 million years ago. The size of these animals approximated that of a modern elephant, and they were equipped with large claws and teeth. The latter were confined to the sides of the jaw, because the animal fed largely on the leaves of trees and bushes. Ground sloths appeared in North America during the Pleistocene Epoch, 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago when a land connection was established between the American continents. Giant armadillos, or glyptodon, genus of extinct giant mammals related to modern armadillos and found as fossils in deposits in North and South America dating from the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs, 5.3 million to 11,700 years ago. Glyptodon and its close relatives, the glyptodonts, 
were encased from head to tail in thick, protective armor resembling in shape the shell of a turtle but composed of bony plates much like the covering of an armadillo. The body shell alone was as long as 1.5 meters. The tail, also clad in armor, could serve as a lethal club. Indeed, in some relatives of Glyptodon, the tip of the tail was a knob of bone that was sometimes spiked. Glyptodonts ate almost anything, plants, carrion, or insects. Elephants, or Gomphothere are an extinct group of proboscideans related to modern elephants. They were widespread across Afro-Eurasia and North America during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs, and dispersed into South America during the Pleistocene. While most forms of Gomphothere had long lower jaws with tusks, which is the ancestral condition for the group, some members, especially the later ones, developed shortened lower jaws with either vestigial or no lower tusks, looking very similar to modern elephants, an example of parallel evolution, which outlasted the long-jawed Gomphotheres. They are generally supposed to have been flexible feeders, with the various species having differing browsing, mixed feeding and grazing diets. With the dietary preference of individual species and populations being shaped by local factors such as climactic conditions and competition. Analysis of the tusks of a male individual suggests that it underwent must, similar to modern elephants. They are also suggested to have lived in social family groups, like modern elephants. The Giant Short-Faced Bear the giant short-faced bear was an enormous animal, larger than the modern grizzly or polar bears. Based on the distribution of the species during the late Pleistocene, the giant short-faced bear occupied a range of habitats with diverse climatic conditions, including open plains, steppe tundra, boreal forests, open grasslands and subtropical woodlands. They were omnivorous, so they would have eaten a variety of foods, depending on what was available. American Lion, or Panthera atrox, is an extinct panthering cat. The American Lion lived in North America during the late Pleistocene Epoch and the early Holocene Epoch, from around 340,000 to 11,000 years ago. Its fossils have been excavated from Alaska to Mexico. It was about 25% larger than the modern lion, making it one of the largest known felids. Being cats, they were omnivorous fed on horses and deer, camels, ground sloths, young mammoths, and bison in North America. It inhabited open grasslands, and probably occupied steppe tundra and mountain conifer and grasslands ecosystems. Dire wolves, or Enosian dirus, lived in the Americas and Eastern Asia during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene epochs, 125,000 to 10,000 years ago. Dire wolf remains have been found across a broad range of habitats including the plains, grasslands, and some forested mountain areas of North America, the arid savanna of South America, and the steppes of Eastern Asia. Its teeth and jaw were very big and powerful, it had a stronger biting force than any other canine species known, its prey is known to have included western horses, ground sloths, mastodons, ancient bison, and camels. Mastodons Mastodons inhabited North and Central America from the late Miocene up to their extinction at the end of the Pleistocene 10,000 to 11,000 years ago. They lived in herds and were predominantly forest-dwelling animals. They had a browsing diet with a preference for woody material. Compared to mammoths and extant elephants, mastodons had a longer and wider body but were not as tall due to their shorter legs. Their limbs were more heavily muscled and had considerably thicker limb bones, making mastodons much more robust in comparison to mammoths. Mastodons are typically depicted with a thick woolly mammoth-like coat of hair, but there is no preserved evidence for this. The Giant Beaver Giant beavers went extinct towards the end of the Pleistocene. They were larger, with proportionally shorter limbs than its modern counterpart. The brain of the giant beaver was relatively small and smooth, unlike the large, wrinkly brain of the modern beaver. Which may indicate that giant beavers were not capable of the complex behaviors exhibited by modern beavers like dam building. They had a diet dominated by aquatic plants, including coarse leaves, the roots of sedges, 
cattails, and other vegetation. Although most giant beavers inhabited lakes and ponds that were bordered by swamps, they are also present in spruce tundra habitats. It is thought that these animals were clumsy walkers but strong swimmers and probably spent most of their time in the water. And all species of mammoth which I will talk about in a later video, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And other species, including bison, deer, and moose suffered massive population losses. So with all of these megafauna becoming extinct at the same time, it is hard to believe that human hunting caused this all so sudden. Here is a quote from Wallace Alfred Russell, from the book Geographical Distribution of Animals. We live in a zoologically impoverished world, from which all the hugest and fiercest, and strangest forms have recently disappeared. Yet it is surely a marvelous fact, and one that has hardly been sufficiently dwelt upon the sudden dying out of so many large mammalia not in one place only but over half the land surface of the globe. There must have been some physical cause for this great change, and it must have been a cause capable of acting almost simultaneously over large portions of the Earth's surface. This book was written in 1876, so even so long ago, without modern equipment and technology, it was clear to an archaeological eye to see a sudden, catastrophic event happen to these animals to all die simultaneously, all around the world. The extinction event was also not isolated to large mammals. Nineteen genera of birds also disappeared. There is also evidence of animals all over the planet changing their migration patterns and habits to adapt to the new climate and earth changes that were taking place. The speed of North American megafauna extinctions is unseen in recent earth history. The graph below outlines the Younger Dryas extinctions compared to the fossil record of the past 50,000 years. Each square represents the finding of a fossil species. At the end of the last ice age, roughly 120 species of mammals became extinct during the Younger Dryas period. This spike in fossil remains coincides exactly with the time of the melting of glaciers, rising sea levels, and massive temperature changes of the Younger Dryas event. Now, what caused the megafauna to disappear? There is no widely accepted theory as to what was the primary cause of the Younger Dryas extinctions. Currently, human overhunting is the forerunning theory. However, there are some serious flaws showing up with this idea. One flaw is that the theory has mainly been applied in isolated incidences and without accounting for all animals lost. The number of mammoths alone was estimated between 5 and 12 million. A staggering number which suggests other factors played a prominent role in their extinction. The sheer body mass to hunt to extinction is an anomaly in itself. At roughly 6 tons each that is roughly 60 million tons of woolly mammoth to be hunted and killed. Then there are all the other species of megafauna. Surely humans couldn't possibly cause this level of hunting-driven extinction? Another problem is that it coincided with the loss of humans. If humans were the dominant eradicator of species, why would they to disappear in the same period? The Clovis people who lived amongst megafauna in North America also vanished during the Younger Dryas period. And lastly, the disappearance of megafauna fossils appears very rapidly at the Younger Dryas event of 12,000 years ago. Or in other terms, a geological blink of an eye. And I don't think humans had the weapons or technology to blitzkrieg multiple species of megafauna. If there is anything to learn from the megafauna extinction, it is that Earth's conditions can swiftly become unexpectedly harsh for its inhabitants. The Younger Dryas was a prehistoric period when many of Earth's species disappeared from the planet. The turbulent conditions of the Younger Dryas event point to a much more cataclysmic demise of the North American megafauna, rather than a gradual human-driven extinction. Earth's periods are defined with extinctions of species of animals to make way for the next wave. The loss of megafauna, just before the rise of human civilization, may have been due to violent climatic change. Now it's up to you. Were the North American and Earth's megafauna driven to extinction by human hunting? Or were they wiped out by cataclysm? <laughs>